She's one of the top fighters at 125 pounds. She's the great Macy Barber. It's been a while. There she Hello. is. Hello, Macy. How are you? I'm great. How are you? It has been so long. What, why have you been so hard to book? You've been elusive. What is going on? I have not. I've literally been... <laughs> I'm just this has been something that like, we tried to get on together and it was just like the timing for you, the timing for me didn't work out. So I'm glad we're finally doing it yes. a month later. I'm sorry. Yes, I've, I've reached out a couple of you were okay. flying, this, that, but uh, I, I, I really wanted to have you on. So thank you for the time. We appreciate it. By the way, do you agree with that statement? Was that your best fight in the UFC? I think it was one of my best fights. Yeah, I feel like I've finally like shown like the whole evolution of me as a fighter and me as a person. And I think that, you know, I'm finally coming into like the old dominance that I had and the new, like, like the new, like, uh, skills and the wisdom and all of that from like, you know, the experiences. So yeah, I definitely would agree. Uh, is it, is it just a time thing? Is it just like life, you mature, you evolve, or are there other things at play here that are making you fight like this? I think it's everything. I mean, I think it's, uh, for one, I mean, it's frustration of however many decisions I've gone to in the last few fights, you know, that's not the kind of fighter that I want to be. And that's not the kind of per performer that I want to be. Um, and then also, I mean, the team, you know, I've finally settled into a, a camp and a team that I'm very happy with. And I'm very confident in the coaches and, and just the environment, you know, to be on a five fight win streak with them together. And also like at, all my wins have come from there, you know, and, and it's, um, it's, I think it's, I think it's everything as a collection. I wonder, um, and I don't know if you feel the same, but like the, the whole thing with you at the beginning about being the youngest champion in UFC history, that was just pressure that you were putting on your shoulders. No one was really putting that on your shoulders. You wanted it. You were very vocal about it in retrospect. Was, was any of that a mistake? I don't think so because I feel like that got me a lot of, um, attention. It got me a lot of eyes and, and yeah, of course, I mean, was it a goal that like, was an easy to attain goal. And was it probably a little bit like with my head in the clouds? Sure. But at the same time, like who doesn't want to either root for someone or tear someone down who's trying to go for something big, you know? And I think that for me, like if I just set my goal on like, Oh, I just want to win this next fight. Well then it's like, all right, cool. I did that. And it's not as, it's not as like fulfilling, you know? And if I'm like, all right, well, I want to be the youngest UFC champion. It wasn't completely out of the question. Was it, a hard goal to reach? Yeah. Did I make it? No, I didn't. But I feel like it gave people something to jump onto and either love it or hate it. Um, and for me, it was something that, you know, it taught me a lot of lessons. I put a lot of pressure on myself and um, I learned a lot. Are you disappointed that you didn't reach that goal? No, no, because it was not like the only goal that I had in my life. You know, it was just a goal that I was like, all right, here's a milestone that I could try and reach. You know, here's a record that I could try and break. And, it doesn't matter whether I'm the youngest champion or, or, or not the youngest champion, I'm going to be the champion. And that's all that matters to me at the end of the day. Um, so for me, it's like, it would have been cool, but at the same time, it's like, I'm going to be the champion no matter what. Uh, how, how far do you think you are from that discussion at this point? Five in a row, your last loss was to the current champ. Very impressive last win at this juncture. How far do you think you actually are? You know, I really think it's all timing. I think, you know, if, fight play out how they're going to play out or, or how we think they might play out, then who knows, you know, maybe they'll give me a shot against Alexa. Um, if not, I'll probably be like maybe one or two. Okay. You think that you could fight? If, I, I could foresee that. Uh, which one? Uh, option A or B? Both. Okay. <laughs> I think it really just depends, you know, because I, I have said it time and time again, I want to fight Alexa, whether she has the belt or not. Um, and that's something because I want as a fighter and as my evolution, again, to show that evolution, I want a fighter, whether I have the belt or not. And so, um, or whether she has the belt or not. Um, so if she loses the fight to Valentina, then sure, I'll take the fight. But if she wins a fight to Valentina and they want to give me a title shot, sure. Why not? You know, either way, I want to fight a rematch. Um, however, you never know how things are going to play out injuries and all of that and just timing and matchups. So, I mean, if I'm offered a matchup that I love, then why not take another fight and then go fight for the belt? Does that it, make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Is it strictly because she is your last loss or is there another reason why you want that fight so badly? Um, I think it's one is because it was one of my losses, obviously, you know. Um, and then the other is I know that how I felt in the third round. I know what I'm capable of and I know the camp that I had to prepare for that fight. Um, 
not taking away from my performance. I was ready to fight. When I walked into the cage, I knew, you know, I believed that I could win. Um, but I feel like I'm a completely different fighter today than I was in that fight, and that's why I want that fight back. What, what was wrong with that camp? Um, it just wasn't something that, you know, I was <laughs> proud of. I came off of a very strong injury. I, mentally, I was not prepared for that fight at all. You know, it was probably one of the only camps that I just didn't want to fight that day. You know, I woke up and I was just like, I don't want to be here. Oh. And I've never done that in my entire life. It just like from a mental side, I just wasn't, I just wasn't in it. Wow. Even in the arena and the locker room, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's not something that I like to admit, but the day of the fight, I was, I literally like cried. <laughs> I was like, I just didn't want to be there. Um, and at the same time, again, it takes nothing away from Alexa. Alexa is an amazing fighter and she, she won it with skill and with technique and with everything she needed to win it with. But for me, it was just like, I gave it my all and, and my all was not in it, you know? And, and that's not the fighter that I am. I'm a fighter that goes out and is like excited to fight and ready to fight and, and wants it, you know? And, and on that day, like I just, I wasn't confident in the preparation that I had, if mm. that makes sense. Is that why you were crying or was it because of something else? I'm so terrible. Is that why you're crying? No, I mean, like, no, I guess it was. It was like, it was just like a, it was an emotional time. Uh, you know, I, again, COVID had also put a thing where we had, um, like the, the quarantine and you couldn't have the people there. And I want, I really like, I feed off of knowing that, like, I have my people with me. And, um, I had a lot of things, you know, in, in camp. I just, I, that I don't really want to share necessarily, but like, between family and coaching and just everything, like it didn't come together. And in that entire camp, I was just like, I just, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right at all. And it just wasn't ready for it. I just wasn't ready for it. Understood. And just curious, did you consider not fighting that day? Um, I mean, I, I remember hearing something about the coaches talking about not fighting. Um, oh, wow. And that is probably what made me the most upset was, feeling like there was people that didn't have the confidence in me in that preparation, you know, and, um, and by coaches, there was one coach in specific and I was like, I love him to death, but to feel that like lack of confidence in me was like, Oh damn, am I, am I ready for this? You know? And I don't ever want to question that walking into a fight, you know, it's like, no, we're going to go in we're going to mess some stuff up, you know, and, and we're going to, we're going to go out and beat this girl up. Um, and I just didn't feel that going into this fight. You know, I felt like, I was vulnerable and it didn't feel right, you know? Um, yeah, it just really messed with my head. <laughs> did you switch teams after that fight? I did. Wow. Yeah, after that fight. I mean, to be honest, though, I came out of that fight and she had given me a, a pretty good concussion. Um, and uh, that's after, after that, I, I took time off and then I made the decision to switch. And it was in that camp that I was like, all right, I need a complete fresh start. And I need to, to change it up again. And I tried to go back to Rufus Fort. Um, and that didn't all, that also didn't work, you know, between time, having time um, with all the quarantines. It was like, Duke was like, hey, I'm going to be out for like 20 days. And that wouldn't work going back into a camp. So I decided to make things, um, change things up and move to a different team and called Uriah, called Danny. And that's how I ended up at Team Alpha Male. And it was like the best decision I've made so far. Have you ever felt that way again? I know obviously the winning streak is 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 not like it's it's happened since that fight, but has that feeling ever popped up again? You know, I don't know. It hasn't. Um, I guess for me, it's just like it's more frustration that I went through that. But at the same time, like I learned how important your mental state really is when you walk into a fight. Like and I know fighters talk about it all the time, like how important your mentality is because it's just as much as the physical you know it's it's almost like if you can have all the physical skills in the world but if you're not mentally checked in and ready to go it's like right you're just you can't put it together you know um so for me i think that switching the camps and also working so hard on that mental preparation and, and with that also just comes the team and the the belief around you you know and for me i think that that's that's what it is what makes Danny such a good coach? Danny Castillo, I'm talking about. Last call, former WC and UFC fighter. It seems like he's really found his groove as a coach. What makes him so good? You know what I think it is? It is his past career. I think it's him learning from what he wanted to do, what he did, what he could have done, what he did, and 
and just taking that and applying it and taking his career lessons. And, and as a fighter, I think that fighters that become coaches are just probably some of the best coaches you'll ever see. And I mean, that's a lot of coaches have been previous fighters, but um, he is, he has the ability to take not just the good things that he did in his career, but also the bad things that he did in his career and the choices that he probably wishes he could have made differently. I, I see them where he's like, look, you know, you could be, I, I've done this, so you should do this. Or, you know, he just takes all the lessons and he applies them everywhere. And he's humble enough to do that and to, to give that, that um, insight into a career, you know, and, and to admit where he feels like he fell short and um, really capitalize on what he did really well. And I think him applying that and then also the belief in the fighters um, is what makes him a great coach. And, and on top of that, I mean, he's very selective. He doesn't just work with everybody, you know, like there's there's coaches that will work with, you know, just about anybody. And, and that's great. But at the same time, like for fighters that are selfish and want to become the champ, like coaches can't have time for everyone. They have to have time for the ones that really rise to the top and. Um, I feel like he is, he knows that and he shows that when he works with the certain athletes that he works with. Do you think Alexa wins on September 16th? I feel like it's a toss up because it's really hard to, to answer that question. I mean, it's, it's not like she went out and just completely dominated Valentina, you know, Valentina made a mistake and Alexa was ready to capitalize on it. And I feel like with this fight, it's like, you see, you see the two, they're both highly skilled fighters they both have very few holes, but they're all both able to capitalize on the little holes that each other exposes. So I think it's whoever gives the hole first, you know, it's whoever exposes themselves first. That's going to get capitalized on um, because neither one of them is like, Oh, it's just a guarantee that this one's going to win. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, not just like, Oh, Valentina's got this because Alex is good enough to capitalize on those holes that um, Valentina shows. And then at the same time, I mean, Valentina has showed it where she was such a dominant champion for so long. The second someone gives a mistake, she's going to capitalize and she's going to she's going to tear you up and win. Um, so it, it's really hard because who, who, who do you pick? Right. <laughs> you know, it, it really is a 50 50. Uh, what about 125, though? For the longest time, it was like Valentina and just a bunch of other fighters. Now, in my opinion, like there's no denying it's the best women's weight class in, in the UFC and maybe the sport in general, like the killers that are in that weight class, uh, including yourself and Manuel Fiora. And how about Rose Nama Yunus uh, now in the weight class as well? Like it's, to me, it's, it's really come a long way. Who had, other than Alexa, who's obviously the champ in Valentina, who has impressed you the most at 125? Who's on your radar? You know, um, I do agree with you that the 125 division has gotten huge and it has gotten way deeper at, at the time I, like i previously thought that the 115 division was the stack division because there were so many girls at 115 but now we see girls that can't make the weight or that move up because it's easier to make 125 um and they're finding success you know um and as far as the skill and the girls at 125 i mean i really thought that tyla santos was was a, right. a, a someone that stood out to me you know especially when she fought valentina i feel like she was um, winning that fight with Valentina and had she not gotten that giant egg on her head, um, I think that that fight would have gone a little bit differently, you know, um, it'll be an interesting matchup with her and Aaron Blanchfield. I know that they're fighting, they're scheduled. Um, that'll be interesting because Aaron is undeniably has an amazing skill set in the grappling game. Um, and she's came through, like, I didn't like a year ago, I'm like, who? I had no idea who that was, you know, and now she's, she's bust on the scene and she's done really well for herself. Um, so that's an interesting matchup that I feel like is, you know, something that we'll get to see. Um, and then man, and she, of course she's, she's also a, a really good fighter in that division. Um, so honestly, I mean, there's so many girls that are like, it's, it's a stacked division. It's not just one where you're going to see just one champ and just dominate anyway. And like forever, you know, because now that I feel like Valentina is kind of giving up, some more um she's making a few more mistakes and, and the girls we're all getting better and we're going to be able to you know continue to capitalize on those mistakes and it's not just gonna I don't think it's going to be a Ronda Rousey situation where it's just like oh she's just beating every girl up beating every girl up and she's just staying forever um I think that we're going to see the belt change hands several times mm. uh do you think Rose is going to do well the Rose situation um <laughs> I the Rose situation I, why do you call it that? Situation. What does that even mean? Because I, I said that because 
I don't know if she's going to do well. I think Rose, from a technical standpoint, phenomenal. Like, I think she's incredible fighter. I just think she's really small. And I think that she's small for the division. And I remember when I previously trained with her, like, she's not, she's not like some physical uh, girl. She's a technical fighter, and she's, she's highly skilled. But I feel like the girls at 125, there are several girls in that division that have the power and have that, like, I'm just going to break you, you know? And they have the power that she doesn't possess. And I feel like Rose is one of those fighters where if she's on mentally, she's on. But if she breaks, she breaks and she, she can get beat. Um, and I feel like that power in the 125 division could break her. Wow. So you think, it, do you, would, you, would you go as far as say it's a mistake for her to be going up? Yeah. I don't think anything's a mistake. I think that everything you can learn something from. And I think why not try it? You know what? Down to try anything once, sure, you sure. know, let her try it. Let her see how she feels. I mean, I could be completely wrong. You know, she could have in the time, I don't know how much time she's had off, but in the, that time, I think she could have, you know, maybe she could put on some muscle. Maybe she could put on some mass and, and completely prove me wrong. Um, that was just kind of the first initial reaction when I heard that she was fighting at 125 and fighting men in at that. I was just like, I don't know tough. how that fight's going to go. Yeah, it's a tough fight. Uh, by the way, speaking of former champions, when I say the name Juliana Pena, what is your response? <laughs> Everyone keeps asking me what? that because I've been very vocal <laughs> about how much. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely one to talk shit and say what I think. But at the same time, I just think that that was just like, bro, what in the world are you doing, man? Like, she's a... Uh, Good for her. Like, she's got some hype behind her because she's talking shit about Amanda Nunes. But, oh, my gosh. It was interesting. And then uh, the last fight, um, the girls that just fought the other night, I think that she thinks she's just going to walk through these girls. And I don't – I mean, Juliana, again, she's tough. She's one of those girls that can take a punch and keep walking forward. But, I mean, I don't think she's, like, by any means, like, a like a dominant female in the, in the division. It's interesting. A lot more people talk about her and you could say have a, have a reaction or have thoughts, good or bad, towards her. Do you, in this day and age, do you have to talk shit in order to get to that point? Do you believe that you have to talk shit or no? I think that if you have to, I think if you have to do it and it's fake, I think you don't have to do it. Like if that's not who you are, like if you're just trying to say it just to start something and to start some drama and get things going, like if it doesn't come naturally, it just comes out cringy, you know? Mm. But if you're mm. like, oh, I'm just going to say what I think. And that's just like, if you truly believe it, I say, go for it. You know, like I could tell you, you know, I don't think the Aaron Blanchfield striking looks very good. That's how I feel. But at the same time, she's successful with it. I just don't think it looks she doesn't look like she could strike, you know, she does it well, but that's just something where like, I could tell you that. And, and just like, cause that's sure. what I believe. Um, but if I'm like, Oh, uh, she's terrible. She's this, she's that. And it just doesn't make any sense. And it's just like, I don't, I don't know why you're talking. Is Aaron Blanchfield overhyped? Um, I think that she fought, um, that's a yes and no answer to me. Because I think that's that her a sitting on the face. That's a sitting on the fence response. <laughs> this is on the fence, okay? Okay, fine. Do I think that she has good grappling? Yes, I do. Do I think that she's beautiful? Absolutely. Do I think that I would win against her? I do. Um, at the same time, uh, she fought Miranda Maverick after I exposed that she doesn't have grappling. Obviously, I was too late to capitalize on that. She fought JJ Aldrich, who I, uh, who hasn't been the same fighter after I fought her. JJ Aldrich has not been the same fighter since since I finished her. Um, then she fought uh, Jessica Andrade, who I don't know what is up with her, but she has fought. She fought her on four days' notice, and Andrade has not looked like the same fighter at all. And she moved back down to one fifteen. So I feel like she has taken fights that have you know really set her up for success, which is great, good for her. Um, so I think that this will be a good test with her and Tyler Santos. Okay, are you a coffee expert? I think. Am I a coffee expert? Yes. No, I wouldn't call myself a coffee expert. I love coffee, though. Yeah, so do I. And last week on the show, we were talking about my new coffee machine, 
And the guys in the back were making fun of the way in which I was using it. They said that you have to put your beans in some sort of like vacuum, air vacuum sealed container and all this other stuff. I have one of these fancy schmancy machines where you put the beans and it grinds it for you. You don't have to get them pre-grinded or anything like that. It's big time. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? What do you do with your beans? What do you do with the beans though? I use, I leave them, I leave them in the bag in an airtight container. And then when I'm ready to make the coffee, I put the amount of beans in that I'm going to grind. How do you know how many beans you need? I'm studying, okay? I was told that you're supposed to measure them by gram. Oh, well, I don't even do that. I haven't started measuring. I just kind of eyeball it. Sometimes I mess it up, but it's fine. Um, but I do know that, like, do- doesn't don't the beans, like, absorb the flavor of, like, if you leave them exposed? Sure, yeah. That's what I would say. But you, you leave know? it in the bag. You don't do this uh, this container nonsense. No, I leave it in the bag. Yeah. What about freezer? Are you a freezer person? Do you put the beans in the freezer? My beans are right next to my coffee machine. Okay. I got to keep it easy. Got to keep it accessible. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. And, uh, okay, so you have to measure. Interesting. And what is your go-to? Like, what's, I, I'm a big, I'm very into coffee. My dream is to open up my own coffee shop. This is my new dream. Let's open one. Let's together? do it together. We're, we're going into oh, business together? I mean, I hardly really know you. Yeah. I don't know what kind of a business person That's you okay. are. Okay, we'll just figure it out. Havesies? We're going havesies? <laughs> Havesies, why not? All right, I had I um I used to own a coffee shop actually. You did with my family. We had one. Yeah, I bought one when I moved to Wisconsin and uh, to train in Wisconsin. And my mom and I bought a coffee shop. We sold it um, after having it for like two years. And my sister has a coffee shop. Wow, she's had one. For Why'd you sell it? Yeah. Um. Well, we sold it because we flipped it, and oh. um, we. I mean, I didn't have time to put into the coffee coffee shop, and my family ran it for a while, and. Yeah, we had one. It was called Black Canyon Coffee in Wisconsin. Wow. And uh, uh, was it fun? Like, yeah. were you involved or not really? I was, yeah. It was at the time that um, I actually was coming off of one of my fights, and I had, had, like, a partial tear in my knee. So I had time to go and help out, and it was when I had moved. So um, we got it up and running. I mean, it was already running. Um, we took it over from someone else. And, yeah. Did you make yeah, money? Yeah, I had some time. I was a barista for a while. Oh, my gosh. So I walk up there asking for my uh, almond cappuccino, and you're the one doing it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was. Well, what, is, what is your go-to drink? Uh, mine is just a latte. I just make an almond milk latte every morning. But it has to Pretty be almond basic. milk, right? Almond milk, though. It has to be almond milk, yeah. yeah. Um, or I'll do, like, macadamia nut milk sometimes. Macadamia nut milk? I never even heard of macadamia Yeah. Really? It's so thick. Oh, now it's yeah, getting it's crazy. Like, I think the brand is like Milkadamia or something like that. That's pretty good. What? Do, how do you feel about oat milk? Um, it's okay. You rolled it's your eyes like at the go-to. oat milk. No, it's just not my go-to. Okay, it's but not bad. Would you go? Would you go? Oat, it like would you go oat over like cow's milk? Yeah. Cow's yeah, milk is gross. Drink milk. I just don't like dairy. Yeah. Yeah. The only time I yeah. I drink dairy is if if it's ice cream. So. Interesting. You ever try? Not. You ever try almond milk ice cream? I have, but usually it's too icy. You know what I've been doing is there's this new like trend going on with the, like the Ninja Creamy, hmm. and you make protein ice cream. So you take almond milk, and then you take a scoop of your favorite protein powder. Ah. And then you put, uh, I think they put like sugar-free pudding mix in it, like a scoop of it, and then you just freeze it. You use the the Ninja thing, and it's ice cream. With almond milk. Interesting. Okay. Uh, have you tried the Grimace yeah. shake? The what? The Grimace shake? No. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Look it up. It's it's big. <laughs> what is that? It's big on no, TikTok. Have to tell me. It's big on TikTok. <laughs> well, I just learned about it last week. Uh, you know Grimace I from tried? McDonald's? The purple guy? No. Yes, yes. There's a shake, a Grimace shake in in honor of his birthday and everyone was making videos it's purple. And they would drink it, and then they would die on TikTok. It's a whole thing. Just it's it's a whole. I learned about it. I'm not that hip, but you're like 25, so I figured that you would know about the grimace shake. I'm not on TikTok like that. I try. I'm, I'm trying to be on TikTok, but I don't scroll through TikTok. Okay, fair enough. Post and leave. I post and walk. Yeah. Post and walk away. Yep. Um, sort of like your fight, your last one. You know, you yep. hit and you yep. walk away. Uh, yep. Walk away. Congratulations. Great to have you on. Thanks for squeezing us into your very busy schedule for carving some time out. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you it. For giving me in. And uh, we'll talk offline about the coffee shop. Perfect. All right. Perfect. I look forward to it. Thanks, <laughs> Macy. Talk to you soon. Yep. There she is, Macy Barber. We're about to be business partners, guys. This is going to be great.